Well, hi everybody and welcome to our Church 360 Ledger Setting Your Budget Overview Webinar. I'm Anna Johnson. I'm a Marketing Manager here at Concordia Technology Solutions. You can see my name and my email up on the screen. If you have any questions either during that webinar and you don't get a chance to ask in the chat or after the webinar, I'm always here to help. Um, just jot down that email address and the phone number and then I'll get back to you as soon as possible. We'll also have this information for you at the end of the webinar so that you can record it at that time too. Since this is a 30 minute webinar, I want to get right into it today with a little bit of housekeeping. So we'll have 25 minutes for our presentation, five minutes for questions. You're always allowed to ask questions throughout. Just know that I might not get to them right exactly when you ask them. And then the recording will be shared. So we'll post all of these webinar recordings after we're done so that you have the best information possible. If you need to share it with someone else at your church, you're able to watch it and share it at that time with them. An outline for our specific training today, we're going over setting your budget. But before we go straight into budgets, I'll go over the way your chart of accounts relates to your budget and also the way your fiscal years in Church 360 ledger relate to your budget. So really, there's a huge foundation for this webinar in knowing how to set your chart of accounts and how to set your fiscal year. If you don't know how to do that yet in Church 360 ledger, I recommend you go back and watch some of our other webinars so you get that all set before you start trying to add budgets in. And we'll talk about different ways you can set your budget. So you always have the option to set your budget based on just any number you enter. But we also provide some data in Ledger so you can set your budget based on historical numbers. So you could change all of your numbers to last year's budget or last year's actual. So I'll show you how all that works in Ledger. And I'll show you a real life example of our own test book that we used here. Uh, we'll also talk quickly about our statements of income and expense and our chart of accounts reports because both of those show figures that are related to the budget figures that you set in budgets. And then I'll also talk about exporting your budgets to Excel and copying your paste and pasting your budgets into Ledger from Excel. So if you're transitioning over from using your books in Excel or from a different program that you exported to Excel, there is a way to capture all that information in Ledger, and I'll show that for you again today. With that in mind, I think we're ready to get started. So I'm going to switch screens over here really quickly. You should now be seeing my main login screen for Ledger. Hopefully this is really familiar to you by now. I'll just sign in. And the first thing we want to talk about is how your chart of accounts relates to your budgets. And to do that, I want to go over to one of the books um, that doesn't have a lot of information in here. So if I go over to my chart of accounts, you can see that I have a very simple chart of accounts set up in here. But what I really want to show you is that all these accounts listed in my chart of accounts are what flow into my budget. So once my chart of accounts is set, I go over to the settings budgets here, and you can see that I have this very simple chart of accounts here for all my budgets. And you can always select a fiscal year for this. So if I go over here and select my year, it'll let me select either the current fiscal year I'm on or a subsequent fiscal year. So the way your fiscal years start is dependent upon what settings you've chosen in the fiscal year setting. So you can see that in this book, I have my fiscal years starting in July. So my current book goes from January to June. If I wanted my fiscal year starts to be in January, I could change this. I'm going to refresh. And then you'll see that it changed my current fiscal year for January to December 2017. And if I go back to settings and budgets, you'll see that now my fiscal year contains all the months for the year, not just January to June. So the two main reasons I showed you this empty book were to show you that anything you have in chart of accounts automatically flows over to budgets. You can't budget for anything that's not in your chart of accounts. And also to let you know that the way these months appear appear is dependent upon your fiscal years you have set in the fiscal year setting. So with that in mind, 
I'm going to go over to one of my other books that's a bit more full so I can show you the complete functionality of Church 360 Ledger. So this is my test book that I use for all different sorts of things when I'm doing webinars like this. So I'm going to go over to my budgets right here and from settings. If we give it just a minute to load, you'll see that this budget looks very different than the one I just showed you and it's still loading there. That's because I have all of my main income and expense accounts here in my budgets and it's quite quite a robust list compared to that other one. You'll also see too that since this book is set for a January to December fiscal year, those are the months that appear here. And I'm going to pretend as if we were setting our budgets for the next fiscal year. One nice thing you'll notice that when you're flipping between fiscal years for your budgets is that you can always go back and forward at least one year. So we're going to pretend we're very proactive at our church and we're setting our budget for the 2018 fiscal year. And it's taking just a minute to load here. There we go. And so now a few things for you to notice here. These have all reset to zero, but if I click in any of my cells, I have a few options. So I can set it to my previous year's budget or my previous year's actuals. So if I wanted to do this, I could just easily click through all of my previous year's figures and it would set it. You can see I didn't have any expenses here. And I can do this for all or certain numbers of my accounts. So if I just wanted to set some of my budget as a starting point to my previous year's budget or actuals, I can click through it in there. If you want to just start out with your previous year's budget and revise it that way, you have another option. What I'm going to do is just scroll all the way to the bottom here. I'm going to reset my budget for 2018. And you'll see that everything is zeroed out up here. There's another way to do this, like I was saying, and you can just do this change all to budget button, and then you have two options, the same options that are listed here, except it's more of a complete process. So I can change all to last year's budget, and you can see that all the numbers auto-populate for me, or I could change all of my budgets to last year's actual. So depending on how your church budgets, if you budget based off the previous year as your starting point or what you actually spent, you can always look at these figures from directly within the budget, so you don't have to have a separate uh, window open, you can always see the previous year's figures from within budgets. Now most churches, I think, you're not going to have exactly the same budget year after year. I hope you wouldn't. So the other thing you can do is once this is set, you can start keying in your numbers automatically. And you can do that by either entering the number in the total column or entering it in the monthly column. So you can see that in this previous fiscal year, our actuals were 39,000. Let's say that I wanted to up that to more of an even number and I can do 40,000. You'll see as soon as I do that, in this first totals column, it automatically divides the total through all the other 12 months of the year. So if you are a church that only sets your budget for the total year and you just split everything out evenly, this is a really simple method. All you need to do is click in each of these amounts and I'll do a few more examples here just so you can see. As soon as I update these total numbers, all the month to month numbers update as well. So I can just go right down the list very quickly and update things that way. Now, if you want to, after you've looked at your last year's, maybe update just one month in your budget, that's perfectly fine too. All you need to do is select whichever month you want to update. So you can see that last year's actual numbers, we only had money coming in the first three months of the year, but not the rest. And that's not completely accurate. So what I want to do for this fund is I want to just key in any of the months that are set to zero. So if I do 100 here, and for each subsequent month I add 100, you can see that as I'm adding the numbers in over here on the right side, the totals column is automatically updated. And I can do this with any of my budgets that I want to do. You just finish up this row right here. We'll go all the way down to December. Okay, 
So we're not going to go through every single account in this chart of accounts. But the main takeaway here is you can be as flexible as you want when setting your budgets in Ledger. Now say you got all the way through here and you decided, oh, I don't want to do it based on last year's numbers. I wanted to do it based on um, just straight up numbers that I had from a meeting or something like that. You can always reset. You have the option to reset up until the point where you save your changes. So you can see as soon as I click that, anything I previously had in here is set to zero all the way up to the top of my budget screen. So if you had some other kind of document you were wanting to use, you didn't want to use your previous year's total at all, that's perfectly fine. You would just enter your numbers in here as you want. Now, one of the main uh, feedbacks we got about this budgets feature in the past year or so was that many churches were doing their budgets in Excel and they wanted a way to flip between Ledger and Excel, whether that's exporting or importing. So we built in a feature here to Church 360 Ledger, which allows you to do the, just that. So I'm going to just put last year's budget numbers in here just so we have a good starting point. And then I'm going to export this budget to Excel. And it'll just give a minute here. You'll see it exports as this budget's file. And my computer will take just a second. While that's saving, I'm going to actually save my budget right here so that we can come back to it later for 2018. You'll see that the budget's gray out while it's saving. And then as soon as the data is done saving, you'll get a confirmation message that lets you know that your budgets were indeed updated. And while that was going on, my budgets opened right here from Ledger. And you can see that it exported as zeros. So that's because I tried to export before I saved. Let's try that one more time. So we'll go up to the top here, export. And here's my second budgets. There we go. You can see that my budget numbers exported just as they were supposed to. Now there are a couple things I really like about this export, and I want you guys to be able to know about this. Your category totals, so these bolded totals here, are always defined by a formula in the total column. So you're never having to re-add in your sum formulas in Excel if you choose to do your budgets this way. And so are all these top category totals. So for rows like this, where we have row eight here, this total is automatically summing up all the accounts in the category beneath it. And then the total right here this top is summing everything in the income category. And you'll see how dynamic this is when I start adding numbers in. So if I wanted to change my total here to 775, you could see that these other two numbers updated as well. And I could do this just down, down the line. So if you're used to working in Excel, if that's more comfortable for you, you can use this Excel to plan out your entire budget. So say I just wanted to clear everything out over here in Excel, and I wanted to start fresh, um, I could do that right here. So I just wanted to add $40,000 to the general fund. And then for all of my other funds, maybe I wanted to add $500. It's kind of a silly example, but hopefully it'll show you what we're doing right here. You can see that as soon as I added in these totals here, it's using the formulas it exported from Ledger to copy over. And since I deleted out these other ones, it's not working quite as well as I wanted it to. But we'll do this. One second here to fix my mistakes. There we go. Okay, so you can do this for as many months as you want. So if you want, we wanted to do the same thing here. We can do that. It looks like I added another zero. And then I will actually set this to a table here. Give me one second. Did my computer catch up. I made a big mistake if I was doing all the rows to infinity here. Let's just try this again. 
Sorry about that, guys. What I'm going to show you next, I'm going to switch back to the ledger while it's working, is that any of the numbers you take from that Excel export, you're able, able to automatically copy and paste back in to ledger. So say we switch some of these numbers here. We added 500 here, we added 500 here, and then we added 500 all the way down the row. So we're going to pretend I was all the way done with moving my Excel reports. But I wanted to update in that ledger without having a key and everything twice. That's perfectly fine. All you need to do is select your table, and you can do this. You can do Control-A, for example. That will select all your table. And then I just did Control-C. And then if I go back to ledger, I'm going to just start in that first same cell I was copying over from before. I'll do Control-B. And if it gets just a minute, you can see that all of these numbers updated. Let me show you that once more. I'm going to reset. And then I'll go back up to the top here. I'll just paste it in. You can use your keyboard shortcuts or just the regular paste option. And you can see all my numbers transferred in from Excel. So this is a really nice feature. It allows for a lot of flexibility between Ledger and Excel, especially maybe you were taking your computer to a meeting, wanted to make some notes in Excel and then put it into Ledger later, that's perfectly fine. It'll work out just this way as you want it to. So once you're all done, all you need to do is go down to the bottom here and save your changes, and then your Ledger file and your Excel file for your budgets will be exactly the same. Let's you know my budgets were updated. So how this all works together and culminates is in two of our reports, our Statement of Income and Expense Report and also our Chart of Accounts Report. So I'll go up here, this is our Reports icon, and let's go to our Income and Expense Report. So you can see that these figures all tie to your budget right here. So we have our budgets versus our actuals, and we can expand and collapse these any way we wish. And you can see the percent of our budget that we spent and then our dollars remaining. So for this same period from March 2016 to March 2017, we had $509,000 budgeted to come in, but we only had $271,000 come in. So we only had 53% of our projected income actually come in, so we're waiting to get this $208,000. However, we had budgeted to have $600,000 in expenses in that time period. We only have this amount of expenses, so we have this much remaining. And then this is our income less expense column, so taking these two numbers minus each other. So you can see we budgeted for a deficit, but actually we're doing much better. We had more money come in that go out, so we're in the positive. And then this budget, the negative number can be a little bit deceiving, um, but in this case it's actually good because we're ending up over our income is greater than our expenses. Now this is kind of a silly report because I didn't change the date up here. Let me just go to 2017, or I'll go through the whole 2016 fiscal year, and that'll be a little bit more accurate here. So you can see here in my income and expenses that our budgets and astrals are a little bit different. In both instances, we had a higher budgeted number than our actuals, but that's okay. That lets us know that for next year, we need to not budget so high and we can create our budget slower. The same thing as exporting your actual budget view applies to your income and expense report. So you can export this to Excel. It's just going to take another minute there. And I'll wait for my computer to open the program. And the one thing I want to show you with this again, I can get my window open here. Give me one second. Here we go. Once I click Enable Editing, all of these figures will populate. And the big thing I want to show you here is that all these formulas carry through and carry over. So if you're ever in that report in Excel and you have a question about how we actually got to those figures, you can see that here. Or if your church shows the figures in a different way, you can always do that right here.
our next report we want to talk through today is our chart of accounts report. So this will look um, pretty similar, but there's a few differences. So you can access this report by going up here to your reports and then your chart of accounts. And then you can see your starting balance, your ending balance, your debits and credits, your, your change over time. So the reason we're talking about this chart of accounts report in budgets is that in addition to those last year's actual and last year's budget figures, this might be another report that you want to have open when you're setting your next year's budget. So a thing you might want to do is export this chart of accounts report to Excel. And then when you're setting your budget, for the subsequent fiscal year, just give it a second to catch up with me there, you can compare those numbers and use all that data as one thing together. So just give it one second, I'll go back to 2018 here, and then I will get my cell report open. So all of these reports were meant to be used in tandem along with Ledger so that you're always able to make the best decision possible. Just give it a minute, so. so this is another way you could look at things. You can see that this chart of accounts report does have your assets. So if you wanted to compare your assets and your liabilities and not just your income and expenses to give you a good idea of how you're doing in your actual accounts versus how you budgeted for your income and expense. You could use these two reports together and you can see everything all at once as well. I'm going to click enable editing so everything works here. So those are our two reports, chart of accounts reports and our income and expense reports. I'm going to go back here to ledger and we went through all the budgets. I'm running a little ahead of time, but I know we might have some questions. So I'm going to switch back to my slides, and while I'm doing that, if there's any questions about anything I went through, please show me a message in the chat. I know I breezed through that fairly quickly for you all here. Just close out of here. Okay. A few more things to make note of while you guys are writing up your questions. We do have a product updates blog, church360letter.blog. You can see all the updates to products you made in the past, and you can read a complete article about the budgets changes that we've recently put in place there. Actually, why don't I just go here now? So we have a little bit more time. You can see if you go up to products here and I go down to ledger and then I go over to the blog. Here's the blog and you can see that our last batch of training webinars is listed here and then I also have an article here about the updates that were made last year to budgets. If you haven't read over these yet, I would definitely encourage you to do so. It breaks down some of the things I went down today in a little bit more detail. Shows you more about the copy and paste features so that you're as educated as possible when you're getting ready to save your budgets for the next fiscal year. We also have a set of help articles that are available to you on the web or through Ledger. So I'm going to open that Chrome here and I'm going to go through Ledger. Say I was setting my budgets and I had a question about budgets. There's two ways to check on that. You can use your info center here. Click on the suggested articles. These are page sensitive. So everything I just talked through should be in this budgets article here. If you're wondering how, if we have any more articles like this, I would encourage you to click on the see original article button. And you can see that there's two articles in here just about budgets. And it talks about importing budgets, which was that new feature we added in adding budgets. You can also back out here through the help system to see all of our ledger help reports. So if you didn't, weren't able to make some of our other webinars or you have an additional question, you'll be able to check that information right here. If you're a person who would rather not look up help articles online and would rather use paper and pencil to go through those, we do have a printed training manual. It is $25 plus shipping, so that's why I wanted to let you know first about the online help system. My advice to you is always to go through the online help system first. 
And then if you can't find it there, give our support text a call. And if you still need help, you might want to use the training manual. But to be really honest, everything that is in the online help system is in the training manual. So we don't want you just to spend money if you don't feel like you need to. If someone asks for it, though, we do have this training manual available to you. It looks like we do not have any questions for today, so I'll end on this note. Here's my name, my email address, and my phone number. Please do feel free to call me at any time if you're re-watching this or if someone else at your church is watching the video and has a question for later. You are also, also always welcome to call our support line. We know that a lot of people sometimes get nervous about calling support if you don't seem to have an issue. It's just a question. Support is there for both of those things. So if you just have a general question about how your budgets are working, you can call and ask them about that. Or if you think something is broken with your budget feature, call them too. You can also enact message them through that screen I just showed you if you'd like to reach them that way. All that being said, we're going to end here about five minutes early, so I hope that's okay. I just wanted to say thank you all for coming today, and we hope you enjoy using Church 360 Ledger. And again, contact us if you have any questions.